Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name's Keith Pickett. I'm the CEO of Core Gold. Um, I live in Ecuador, where we run our company from. It's a Canadian company based out of Vancouver here. But we're actually in, uh, we're operating, all of our, most of our people are actually on, on and around the mine sites in Ecuador. Ecuador, you probably know, has sort of come of age in the last few years. Um, I believe, and this is, this is, a, this, this is our mine. Um, the photograph's about a year old now. It's just when we started. But you can see we're in the highlands of Ecuador. We're not in the real highlands. We're in the, in the area about 16 to 1800 meters above sea level, which is relatively low for the Andes. This is one of the most exciting, in my opinion, one of the most exciting um, ex exploration and development plays, production plays in Ecuador. This is the first open-cut gold mine in Ecuador. So we're pioneers. And the reason we're pioneers is because 40 years ago, I went to Australia when the mining boom started. We rode the mining boom in Australia for 20 years until it started to plateau. 20 years ago, I went to Mexico. We did the same thing. Mexico, they opened up Mexico to foreign investment in the 90s. And we did the same there. We went for about 20 years. We had a great time. Lots of operations, opened up mines, a lot of development. One of the last frontiers in the world, Ecuador. Ecuador is sandwiched between Peru and Colombia. It's not a large country. It's about 60, 60, 600 kilometers long and almost the same wide. Our ground in Ecuador covers the southern part of Ecuador where we have... Um, where we have... Um, uh, approximately 60 kilometers, in other words, 10% of the main gold, copper, Andean trend coming up from Peru. I should get on to that next because being the optimist that I am and being the realist that I am, you really need to know that we're in a risky mining business. However, Ecuador has changed its laws. And so one of the things that is really exciting about it is that it's now in the same position as Australia was 40 years ago, Mexico was 20 years ago, and now here we are sitting in probably the, one of the last frontiers of exploration in the Andean trend halfway up from Peru to Colombia. Now, if you look at the situation in... in um, in Peru, in, first of all, let's start in Chile, where you've got these big copper properties in the Andean trend. You then come up to um, Peru, and they become copper gold. Now you go into Colombia on the other end, you've got gold copper. Right bang sandwich between those two is Ecuador. Ecuador is on the Andean trend, and in Peru it comes straight up like that. When you get to Ecuador, it twists like that. In other words, it twists about 30% to the east, 30 degrees to the east. Why is that important? Because you're on the main Andean train coming up from, from Peru, where you've got all these really significant large operations. Newmont, for example, 45 million ounces at Yanacocha. Barrack had 10 million ounces at Pierina. Those are some of the more notable ones, but there's an awful lot of them there. And they come up the trend. When you get to to, to Ecuador, the trend bends, 30 degrees. So what happens when you bend a, men, a trend like the, like the Andes and you go like that? Well, the rocks crack. And in those rocks cracking and the movement of the rocks comes more mineral. So I believe that we have one of the most exciting plays in the entire Andean trend from, from, from Chile right through to Colombia because we're on the hinge of the Andes in Ecuador. And note, we have about six, 60 kilometers of a 600 kilometer trend. You may know that in the northern part of this same trend, there's a, there's a company called Sol Gold. Three to four years ago, when I first went to Ecuador to sort, see what the situation was there, Sol Gold had a market cap of $20 million, thereabouts. It was worth nothing. They couldn't even afford to pay their drillers. They had to give them shares to pay their drillers. Today, that company is one of the largest, probably undeveloped gold 
copper ore bodies in the entire world and its market cap is close to a billion dollars. We think that on the other end of the same trend, this is core gold, on the southern end of the trend, they're up on the northern end towards the Colombian border with a fantastic situation. We think that our, our areas to the south have the same potential. We can't say whether they're better or worse, but they're in the same trend right where the cracks are taking place in the trend. What we have here is, we, what we have is with 2.1 million ounces of high-grade gold in the di what we call the dynasty, dynasty actual gold field. Uh, and it's about the, the, the actual gold field that has the 2.1 million ounces is one part of four large areas that we own. This area, the dynasty one, has about 15,000 hectares, which is large, and is part in this part, part of this trend, has 2.1 million ounces, uh, mostly resource, but we've started mining it on the surface, as you see, to open up the veins, and there's about 100 veins already found. Whilst we've been mining, we found one vein for every vein that was originally found. The drilling that was done was done down to approximately, before we took over, was done down to about 150 metres. That drilling, that drilling was, there were 200 drill holes drilled, and that defined uh, a, a resource, basically, of 2.1 million ounces. Since the valleys that you saw in the last picture go down from 1,600 metres to about 700 or 800 metres, and the ore is known to extend at least 200 metres below the valleys, you can see that the depth potential for these mesothermal veins, not epithermal, but mesothermal veins, could be extremely significant. So here we have 2.1 million ounces developed basically in the top portion down to 150 metres or so, because that was the depth of the drilling and a lot of it hasn't been found already. So the overall potential for this ore body, or for these ore bodies, is, is extremely exciting. It could well be five times what's already been found. Now, the next thing is that underlying all of these vein systems, not just in the Dynasty Goldfield, but in other areas that we have there, underlying these vein systems are porphyries. What are the big companies looking for? Porphyries, where do they want their next copper mines to come from? Porphyries. Okay, those porphyries have been developed in Chile, in, in Peru, but the first one that's really been explored and opened and is being opened up by two Australian companies basically fighting each other to get more interest, Newcrest and BHP, two of the larger companies in this business, and two of the very exciting companies in this business, in Sol Gold. Those, those, the, these, expert, these porphyries that we have down the southern end appear to have the same sort of potential. Now, up to now, we, didn't, we, we, we took this company over. Uh, we, I inherited this company, basically. I took control of it uh, with some friends of mine about two, two and a half years ago. It was bankrupt. It had approximately $30 million of debt. We managed to put $4 million into it because nobody would give me any money. They said it was a complete shambles. And it was, it's true, it was a shambles. But the fact of the matter is that I've been around and found deposits in Papua New Guinea, Octeti, the gold cap of Octeti was my personal discovery. I didn't discover the copper, Kennicott discovered the copper, but I found that there was a big gold cap to it. Two million ounces sitting on the surface. I was involved very much with a, comp with a property, two, pro two big properties in Mexico, which had, had similar potential Neither of them for the, for the problems in Mexico ever got developed, but they are actually mines. But they, they, were, they were caught by the problems that Mexico had with its governments. So these porphyry targets that we've got here in Ecuador are significant. And each of our main areas, which are four areas, um, each of them has porphyry targets below them and serious porphyry targets. When you put vein systems of the caliber of these vein systems we're seeing, and by the way, the average grade of the Dynasty gold veins is around four grams to the ton. The width of the veins is between two meters and are up to, up to 10 meters, maybe a bit more, but they probably average four to five meters wide. They're eminently suitable to open cut down to about 70 meters, and a number of them join together so you can make bigger cuts, combined cuts, open cuts. Now, I've already talked about the, 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 the jurisdiction of Ecuador. Obviously, Ecuador opened up its mining law in, um, in 2013. Nothing very much changed because it's a South American country with a bureaucracy. But gradually, things changed. 
and in 2017, Ecuador was voted uh, one of the countries of the year award um, in Toronto, Canada at the PDAC. Now, we forged extremely good relationships with the, I'm the only CEO of any mining company in Ecuador to have personally been invited by the president of Ecuador to give them advice on how they should open up their mining industry in Ecuador. Also, the Minister of Mines has asked me for certain advice on tailings projects, etc., in Ecuador. Why, why is that important? Because we're proposing heap leaching, which has never been used in Ecuador, but at the Dynasty Goldfield, we, can, we find that a lot of our oxide ore can be heap leached. You imagine heap leaching three grams or more. You imagine the profit potential on that. So it's very exciting. And why is it that the government's so interested in us? Because we started, when we went there, uh, the country was in a mess with illegal miners. So I've developed systems whereby miners are allowed to mine little areas of our lands. So we were able to put back a lot of illegal miners, illicit miners, back into the workforce. We've done it with over a thousand people so far. Um, and that's put a number of, a thousand families basically, back into the workforce again when they weren't before they were illegally mining. That's been done all legally. So, so the government's impressed and have asked us to, to, to assist them in the sort of social programs that will, will bring a country like Ecuador up into the 21st century and give it its mining industry that it really deserves. Of course, it really wants to develop its mining industry because the oil price of oil, which is its main industry, has gone down. So consequently, it needs to develop another industry and consequently, the President, the Minister of Mining and also the new Minister of the Environment have, um, have, um, have put their weight behind moving the country forward in this manner and we're at the forefront of that. Um, I'd just like to say a couple of things about our board and, and about myself. Uh, obviously, I'm, uh, I'm British by birth. I was at the Camel School of Mines. I've run all over the world, through Africa, Australia, uh, Southeast Asia, North and South America. I've built a number of mines all over the place. But the nice thing about our company is we have a, we have a couple of directors, or several directors, uh, one of which is um, the ex-CEO of Mine Finders, when they sold that to Pan American Silver for, I think, a billion and a half dollars. So, in other words, we have people supporting us who've got background experience on helping us build operations to, to sell them out to the majors. Now, we may or may not uh, sell some of our properties, may joint venture them or whatever ever have you. But right now, we've reduced our debt by more than half, the $30 million debt that we started off with. Much of it wasn't in the books, so it wasn't, wasn't accounted for. Much of it, of, uh, we've, we've paid that down from operating from, and now we've been able to take our companies out of, out of liquidation. They were in liquidation. They were under, under basically receivership when we took over. We've been able to buy our, buy our way out of that by paying the government back money that was owed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, before we took over. We've been able to clean our companies up. And by the end of last year, we got them out of receivership and we were, we were able to remove all the liens and mortgages against all of our concessions by the end of last year, early December. Since then, we have now are in a position to sell some non-core assets. So now you will see our debt probably be reduced to almost to zero within the next, with, certainly within the next half of this year. Um, you will see our debt go, go down. Um, we are, that will mean that we won't be paying interest, we won't be paying back payments to old debts, etc. Um, and we will have money to expand. That, what we will do with that money is expand our, our exploration programs. We're doing a small amount of exploration. That will expand our exploration programs, uh, increase our processing capacity on our plant, and, and, and give us a much better operating presence in the country. The strategy for uh, 2019, so the strategy is actually to really strengthen the balance sheet. In other words, reduce the debt to zero. Uh, and that will be done by, and we couldn't do this before because we didn't have access to our own concessions. They were all mortgaged and leaned against, against prior debt. So continue the liquidation of the non-core assets. I can tell you right now that we have a number of major companies interested in doing deals with us as we've opened up our operations now. Um, we're looking at the sale of the old Zaruma gold mine <clears throat> and probably, <clears throat> excuse me, and bringing in cash from joint venture partners. We have a number of people interested, a number of larger companies interested. 
Um, we will continue the drilling program at, at our Linderis project where we have a, about a hundred meter wide shear zone. Um, of course, what we've recently realized, of course, is that there's a, also a big porphyry sticking out of the ground there. And near the surface in the fillic zone, it's going about 0.3%. So we're interested in, in, um, in, in, in getting that, uh, get it, doing that. Uh, copper Duke, which is our main, main copper porphyry area, we're interested in getting that really moving out as well. So I believe that our, uh, that our operations are, um, are um, really significant, significant. They will grow greatly. Our exploration programs will expand and we have a lot of interest from majors. Um, and then, so there you are, that, so that finish you off. We have, um, the, you can see the, the, the panoramic view here of the, of the operations. And I say, uh, we have all our permits. By the way, in the background of that is the Pan American Highway. The Pan American Highway, fully paved, concrete road, recently built, two and a half kilometers away from our main operations. So the infrastructure in Ecuador is good, the government's good, and I believe we're going to show some tremendous results this year. Thank you very much.